Hello, this is John Sims with the Advised Serviceability Engineering Team. In this video, I'll cover how to create an IP Office system configuration for a new system using the offline configuration tool in IP Office Manager. Before we get started with the demonstration, first a few notables that IP Office Manager can be used to create a new configuration in offline mode without first having to connect to the IP Office system itself. This allows the creation of a configuration prior to installation that can be sent around via email or file transfer and this can greatly speed up the installation process. So basically it can be used as a staging effort. For IP Office V2 units, the configuration file can then be placed directly onto the system SD card, the primary card, before it is installed into the system or it can be uploaded and sent to the live unit which would overwrite the live unit's current configuration. For IP500 or server edition the offline configuration will need to be uploaded to the live unit and again that would overwrite the current configuration. So now it's time to proceed with the demonstration. So in manager you see me heading to file, create new config and that'll pull up the offline configuration creation wizard and you see I have many modes to choose from North Star, Partner, IP Office Standard, Server Edition. If I select Server Edition, then you have different choices on the right side of the menu. So I could either select an expansion, which is the Linux version of the expansion system, or I can select a V2 expansion system, and then you see we get more module choices. Because with this configuration wizard, you have to know what hardware you're prepping the configuration file for. So I'll select IP Office Standard Mode, and then I have a choice there of 500 or 500 V2. I'll select 500 V2. You have a range of locales, many loca location locales to select, and I'll keep this pegged on United States, U.S. English. Extension length can be from 3 to 9 in extension length on the system, but and more for branch, but I'll select 3 for extension number length. We'll use a 3-digit extension length. And then this is where, again, you need to know what hardware you're prepping the configuration for. Otherwise, you could run into errors using this method. So I'll select a combo card with an ATM4U V2, ATM Universal V2. And then, as you see in the example, I'm building a config here with an ATM16 as an expansion module and, let's say, a DS30 V2. So you see how you would need to know the expansion modules and the extension and daughter cards in the system. My system that I want this to work on is just a V2 with the combination card. So that's what I'll then select. And I'll hit OK at the bottom. And you'll see I'll let this run real time. It takes just a minute, a little less than a minute, some few seconds here as you saw it run real time to actually create the configuration for Manager. So it's basically a default configuration. You see the remote user and no user accounts in the normal extension range. And if we head to System tab, you'll see that under LAN 1, we have it pegged on 42.1, which is very typical. Right now I have it on DCP client mode. We'll adjust that later in LAN 2 is also pegged on 43.1. Under DNS server, I'll add in a server address. So these are just giving you examples of what can be modified. Basically, you can modify the entire configuration, treat this as the template for this customer. Um, you can add in short codes. You can add in, as you see me clicking around the configuration tree, we can add in IP routes in advance. If you know the network requirements and the network routing that's needed to be added, we can also paste in license keys to add in license keys. Now the license status will remain unknown until the unit's rebooted. Then if it's a valid key, it'll, it'll show up as valid status after the reboot. We can add incoming call routes, for example. So again, I'm just clicking around showing some quick examples that you can pretty much make any changes to your normal configuration here and this will be saved as your default configuration. So let's head back to LAN 1 and you see how we were grayed out and that was because we're set to client mode on DHCP mode. So if I go ahead and instead select disabled, 
Now you see we can edit the IP address of the LAN 1 interface to anything that we need to to match customer requirements. And we'll click OK. And from this point we have an option. Let's say we've made all of our changes. Now we have various options on saving the config. We can save the config as a file and you'll want to name that file you'll see me name this file now I'll select the proper directory I want to save this file to on my laptop config.cfg because that's the proper file name of a runtime config on the system SD card which will soon copy this file to now you see here the other option is we can send this configuration to a live unit so bad example here I would overwrite a branch configuration but as you see here and I won't do that we could have sent that to a live unit instead we're gonna save that config.cfg file directly to the SD card you see on my laptop file system I have the SD card plugged into my SD card reader so it recognizes it as an IP office MULAW card and there's no config.cfg existing on the current card it hasn't been used to boot the system ever so I'm going to hunt around for where I saved the file and I'm going to copy that file directly to the SD card. So I found the file in the subdirectory there and that config.cfg you see it's a type CFG file. I'm going to now copy this directly into the primary folder of the SD card. So the SD card has been already prepped either through a recreate card processor direct from factory ship and I'm going to copy that config file into the system primary folder on the SD card so the config file is properly in place and now this SD card is ready to be removed from the laptop plugged in the IP500 V2 unit and then rebooted to run this custom configuration Now one last note and that's around licensing. For the IP500 V2 units a license file called keys.txt if found in the SD card folder which the IP office uses when it boots the IP office will merge that file and the licenses within that file into its runtime configuration. So that's another way to pre-prep licensing is to use a keys.txt file. Now you previously saw me copy in a single license but if you had many licenses to copy in you may want to take this approach the files should be a plain text file UTF-8 actually containing a license name and a license key separated by a comma on each line as you see in the first example or you can build the file as simply a license key on each line thank you for your time today we welcome comments questions and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.